Christy Maver, and I'm sitting here with Jeff Hawkins and Subutai Ahmed. And it's December 2018, and as we've done the past few years, we like to, at the end of the year, take a look back at what's happened uh, for Numenta and kind of look at the progress that we've made and what our goals are for the following year. So, Jeff, you and I sat in this room a year ago, December 2017, <laughs> and talked about just that. So I want to read a couple quotes from some things that you said last year, okay. and I'm going to ask you uh, how we did. I hope they sound okay. Yeah. <laughs> so one was, uh, you said we were uh, starting to understand the layers in a cortical column, and we were getting close to a fundamental theory and that we would come out of 2018 with an amazingly not complete but almost complete theory about what all of the layers in the neocortex are doing. So how do we do? Uh, well, I, I give ourselves a, a partial success on that. Okay. Um, so this last year, 20, uh, 2018, we did produce a couple of very significant papers. Uh, one of them is in review right now. That's what we call the Frameworks paper, and you can read about it today, even though it's not uh, published yet. It's on the archive, by archive preprint server. And in that, we laid out a very fundamental uh, framework for how to think about the neocortex. There's a lot of big ideas in that paper. It's really a t total rethinking of what we think the neocortex is doing based on locations and grid cells in the neocortex. So uh, we're very excited about that. In there, we did uh, we do start laying out what some of the layers of the cortex are doing, and we're pretty high confidence in a few of those. Um, we've got more to do. So I would say, are we almost, almost done? I would say, no, we're not almost, almost done, but we're on a good way there. So. Uh, ideally, we'd love to have it all figured out. I uh, didn't say we would have that last right. year. I said we'd be getting closer. And I, I, I think that's a, we did get a lot closer. Mm -hmm. And we laid out a fundamental framework for the whole thing. Uh, and we feel really great about that. So um, I, I would give ourselves a, a, a pretty good, uh, um, but not a complete success on those goals. Okay, and just to touch on the, the frameworks paper that you mentioned, as we call it. A framework, a framework for intelligence and cortical computation based on grid cells in the neocortex. That's the, that's the one. You can search Google yes. Scholar for that. Uh, and it's also available on our, our website, yes. as are a number of other um, assets that support it, one of which is a talk that you gave as a, the keynote speaker for the Human Brain Project Summit, yeah. um, which was really where you kind of publicly introduced yes. that. In fact, that I was theory. invited. That was a, a lovely talk. And, uh, not that my part was lovely, but it was a very a great invitation. Uh, I got to speak to it in front of 800 scientists, basically, and um, and I was invited to do that based on the on that theory, based on the framework. Um, so uh, so people are really really excited about it, and interested in it, and uh, it's getting some attention. Yeah, great. So okay, so now I want to look ahead to 2019, and I'm going to ask you both what are what are the goals for Numenta for the the coming year? Yeah. Well, I'll go first, and then Super can go. Okay. okay. So, uh, as uh, if you're a long-term follower of the mentor, you know we have two basic missions. Uh, one is a pure science mission. It's which is a, a biological reverse engineer of the neocortex understands how understand how the biology works. And the second was is to take that knowledge and to apply it to practical problems. Um, and so I'm going to talk about the first part, and Super is going to talk about the second part. So. Um, it really does feel like we are coming, to, uh, uh, making significant progress on our first goal. Uh, with the Frameworks paper, we've started flushing out a, a very complete theory about how the neocortex works. Um, and we're going to work on continuing that this coming year. Uh, I don't expect there to be any new major revelations, but we're going to be filling in lots of pieces of that. So we talked about earlier about you know, knowing what the different layers in the neocortex do. Uh, we are deep into that right now, and uh, and we're making progress on multiple fronts there. So we're, our goal is to sort of finish and flush out this idea that a cortical column is much more powerful than people think and can model complete objects and then understand how the hierarchy works. So to me, that's... Uh, it, I wouldn't call it cleaning up work. It's very hard and significant work, but it's all within this framework. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're going to introduce another framework. There's, that's it. Um, so uh, that's we're going to continue focusing on that, and it feels like we're getting close. I said that last year. Uh, I really feel it this year, um, and uh, so uh, it's exciting, and we're making good progress on it. So that's we how that manifests itself. I imagine it might be. Uh, if we're lucky, we'll have another major paper out in the fall of this 2019, 
which really sort of details in much deep, more detail what the different layers are doing. That would be my goal. Okay, great. And can you talk a little bit um, as part of that? You know, one of the things that, that came out of the, the frameworks paper that um, that has picked up somewhat is the um, the thousand brains theory yeah. of intelligence. Can you talk a little bit about about that for people who might not know? What yeah, that is? basically one of the one of the uh, outcomes of this um, framework that we published. Uh, it wasn't where we started, but it's a result of it, is that um, every section of the neocortex is, is much more capable, as I mentioned, and can model objects because it can um, do sensory motor inference. And so uh, what we realized from that is that the cortex, we, we tend to think of it as building a model of the world, so it has to know what you know tables and desks and chairs and cups and cameras are and things like that. Um, but the neocortex doesn't have one model of those things, it has many models of everything. So um, the, the models of what a, a, a coffee cup are, and we use that a lot in our papers, mm -hmm. um, there are models that are there's somatosensory models, I mean touch models, there's visual models, there's, there's uh, so tactile, visual, even auditory. Um, there are multiple ones in each modality and they communicate to each other as opposed to having a single model of what a coffee cup is. We kind of, that's how neuroscientists generally think about how the cortex works. You have all the sensory input and you end up with some model of something. We realize now that there are hundreds or thousands of models of everything. And, um, and then how they interact with each other. We first talked about that in our 2017 paper, the one that uh, we call the Collins paper, mm -hmm. uh, which is in um, Frontiers, Frontiers for Neural Circuits. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, but we really sort of, uh, we, we didn't use that term at that time, and we didn't, hadn't really flushed it out as much now. So in the, in the Frameworks paper, the one that was uh, submitted and, and, and is available now, um, that was submitted in October this year, um, that paper, we've called this out, we really sort of developed it a bit and explained it a little bit more clearly. But it's a total rethinking about how we think about um, how, we, how the brain models the world. And in hindsight, it's obvious now. Um, so, but you know, we didn't realize it even until just a couple of years ago. So, uh, so we've given it a name, the Thousand Brains Theory. It, it's a good way of encapsulating a lot of stuff into a single term that people can refer to. And um, um, and I think uh, a number of people have picked it up, so it's a good it's a good term. And that and it has implications for both the neuroscience and the machine intelligence. It is it basically it's, it's a it has to, it's a basic framework for understanding what intelligence is, mm -hmm. and so we don't have a single some sense a single model of the world, and intelligent machines in the future will not have a single model of the world. This is clearly the way to build a system with multi modalities and sensory motor interactions and robots and, and true AI. Um, we're not there yet. Um, I mean, that's not the way the world in AI works right, today. Right. But uh, I'm pretty confident that's what it will be. Okay. All right, so that's, uh, that's what's on, on tap for this. Mission number one. Yes, yeah. for mission number, <laughs> number one, one on the two. scientific side. So, Subutai, can you talk about mission number two? Yeah, so, I mean, we've always had these kind of dual mission and desires. I mean, I think for the past few years, we've really focused on the neuroscience yes. aspects, and I'm super excited about the science. Um, uh, and I think there's still tr a lot to, to go on that. But I think now that we have this framework or a way to think about it, uh, about intelligence and, and cortical function, I think we can start asking the question, you know, all of these principles that we've now laid out, you know, can they impact the world of machine intelligence in practical applications today? Mm -hmm. And I think it's kind of interesting and convenient that in parallel in the deep learning world, people are realizing that there are fundamental limits to deep learning. Although uh, there are a lot of practical applications and they'll continue to have amazing results, uh, it's not the path to true intelligence. And there's many sort of properties that we expect of truly autonomous intelligent machines that just aren't possible with today's uh, technology. So I think it's a really convenient time, and I think for, for us it's a perfect time to start asking these questions. Okay, these principles that we've laid out in this Thousand Brains Theory and in the Framework Paper, and you know, it's amazing when you think about it, we go all the way from synapses and dendrites all the way up to the complete neocortex. And the th framework kind of encapsulates all of that stuff. So we have very detailed kind of mechanistic ideas about all of these different principles. And now we can start asking, okay, can we apply this to practical applications and can we remove some of these bottlenecks that are there? So that's that's pretty exciting to, to yeah. get back into that, that yeah. world, that side of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, uh, this is Subutai's strength, and so he'll be leading up that area, um, and uh, I, I will be still almost uh, mostly focused, on, uh, almost completely focused on the, on the neuroscience side of things. So, um, but it's a good natural, uh, uh, we have a dual mission, we sort of dual lead team, so <laughs> yes. that fit that dual that mission pretty well. well. Yeah. 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 
yeah, and who knows where this will lead. I mean, there's so many different aspects that, that we can apply uh, the framework to. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it's there's many different options, and we're exploring a lot of them. And, and yeah. it's exciting we'll to see, see where it goes. Going. Well, you know, if you think really long term, I am very, very confident that the, the future of AI will work on the principles of the brain, at least many of those principles. And so we, as we talk, we've identified many of these already, everywhere from sparse distributed representations to how how unions of representations are formed, to how we learn sequences, to how we do sensory motor inference, and so on. And um, the question is, how do you get there? You know, what's the path to that point, right? How do you, it's, uh, we're a long way from building machines that work like that. Yes. And, uh, you know, so it, it behooves us to think about it carefully. Uh, what's the right path? How to do it responsibly? And um, so um, that's, you know, super is going to be thinking about it broadly and also, you know, point like, what can we do today that's on the path to that ultimate goal? Right. Very exciting. So you know, a year from now, I'll be sitting down with both of you again. I'm and being very careful with my words. I'm saying, well, my God, this is going to come back to me next year. Yeah, sorry to interrupt you. No, no, it's great. But um, thanks for sharing your thoughts on, uh, on this year and, and the goals for the year ahead. Yeah. And uh, thank you all for continuing to follow Numenta. Yeah, I, I, I'd like to add on to that, too. It's, uh, it, for those of you who do follow us carefully and, um, and support us, um, we appreciate it tremendously. Um, get a lot of resources to do. Anyway, we're trying to do our best to, uh, to on our dual missions, and, um, and and we appreciate those of you who are supporting us uh, um, out there and following what we're doing. Yes, great, and have a happy new year, everyone. Yeah. Bye. Mm -hmm.